Lisa. Uh, we, I have some very unusual things to work with today on the same page. I've got a couple of photos. I have a stencil that I want to use. I have some paper from an architectural uh, book. This was a, it would have been a textbook. And it has all kinds of interesting pages in there. Some different mists. I have chipboard for the, you know, like the little call out boxes. And we're still on a quest to use thickers, and again, I'm working on number thickers, and I have some old stickers and um, some of these little, I don't know if I'm using stars or not, but anyway, lots of interesting stuff to work together on this page. The sketch for the page also looks a little odd, because we've got our two photos, and then this group of numbers down here. What I want to do is create a border and use a bunch of my number thickers in that border, and I'll have a couple of the numbers to really uh, stand out. What's going behind the photos is some misted um, paper, and I, I wanted to use this particular stencil. This is from Crafter's Workshop, and I will have to look up the number. It's on here somewhere, and put that on the screen for you. But anyway, this stencil has a lot of covered space in it, so when you mist it or paint it or whatever you do to it, you, you have a lot of the background showing. But if you put mist on it, it also works really well as an inverse. You can put paper on top of it and soak up uh, the design, and so you can really get two designs out of this stencil quite easily. So it works really well for that. And what I thought for paper, I looked at some of my pattern paper, but what I decided to use uh, was some book paper. And I chose this um, architectural book because the page is about my husband and this is not his particular area of expertise but he's a very technical person basically he's a nerd so uh, uh, or that's well that's one feature of his personality so it's the Big Bang Theory he's his favorite show you know all that kind of stuff anyway so I think some pages like this with the misting over it will make a really good background for this page and also because we're going to be focusing in on the numbers because we're going to be doing his birthday so I'm going to get started, I think, first doing the paper and the mist so that this can have some time to dry. Okay, so going through my this architectural um, textbook that I bought at a used bookstore and picking out some pages, I wanted things that had either drawings that I thought looked like the kind of things that he would be interested in or in the case of that first page there that had formulas on them because he was a math major in college. And then the second one I picked, the drawing, I think that might be a plumbing diagram or something, that which is not relevant to what he does now, but he does uh, works on pinball, pinball machines. So he works with circuit boards a lot. And that sort of looked like a circuit board a little bit to me. It wouldn't to him, so I won't tell him that. that that's why I picked it. But I'm trying to get, you know, that kind of um, nerdy sort of look. And a lot of this will get covered up. You'll still see the design through the stencil, but it won't be as obvious what it is. Choosing some mist colors here, I decided to use my stickers as a guide for the color since I'm not pulling color from the photographs, which is a really unusual thing for me. The, there's no blue in the photographs. I'm picking blue because it's his favorite color, and I'm using this blue-green because it's on some of the stickers that I think I want to use. So I started with some mint um, Color Shine from Heidi Swap and added some blue mist from October Afternoon, what's left of what I dumped on my carpet one time. And I got one real pretty design there, and then I'm taking the remaining ink that's on that stencil and just pressing the stencil face down on top of the paper. And that will pick up the rest of the ink. So you get the same image, just inverted, and you get the same colors with one spray of mist. So it's a really economical way to use your mist and kind of a fun way too. And we'll come back to those when they dry. I need to trim down some cardstock for my numbers to go across. I have some gray recollections cardstock. I initially thought I would just have my numbers kind of random. I'd have the, the main one there, 65, that I wanted to show up. And then the rest of the numbers, just, just random ones. I thought then it would be kind of fun though to do them as ages and sort of have ages that led up to 65 and then beyond. So the randomness is in what ages I picked. There's nothing special about the age 23 or the age 48 as far as I know. They're just what numbers that I had in the different um, paper collections that I was, or thicker collections that I was using. They're all grays and uh, black colors so that they wouldn't compete with the number 65. 
and I also have more thickers in those colors than anything else. Some of these will need a little extra glue, some like that 52 there, that's a kind of thicker that sticks really well. We've all had big birthdays this year, so doing a lot of layouts related to age, but it's just the way it happened to fall. And I need to put one more age there out on the far right. And I'm sorry, the left side's cut off here, but you'll see it in just a moment. So I think I did 9, 17, 26, 36, and so forth. Okay, now we have our misted backgrounds. I'm thinking about doing some matting to my photos since I've kept the gray cardstock out there, and I think I probably will do that. I am going to need to trim down these pages, and working with book paper like this, I, I think tearing it looks really good, so just folding it a couple of times and, and tearing it, because most of these kinds of papers will tear really well. I also love book paper for this kind of thing because it tends to absorb the ink or the mist. Now this particular book, being a textbook, it was a little bit of a um, smoother surface paper than some of the old, some of the other kinds of books that have a, a coarser texture to the paper, but it, it still did a fine job uh, pulling up the inks. And I will be adding a little bit of gray ink around the edges of these to kind of go with everything else. And I did just make sure that I had all the blue off of there. There was just a little bit coming off on my fingers. And I'm going to need some paper behind those numbers too. I'll just pick a designer paper, probably in the bluish color. And I have this fun sheet of paper here that has all these bottle caps on it. This is a, uh, from Crepe Paper. It's a fairly recent collection. I think it was one of their summer collections. And I just bought the, the page that I could punch the uh, elements out. And I uh, just punched them out with a one and a quarter inch punch. I chose some fun ones here. You are here for the 65. And I love the one way. <laughs> it really is only one way you can go on these ages. And then I have smile up there at the top. Now this one, I kind of wish I'd done this different. I painted the call out white. And after I got it painted and laid it on there, I realized it probably should have been a little darker color. And of course I could have repaint. Actually, I didn't realize it until I'd already stamped it. That was the problem. Um, if I'd noticed it earlier, of course I could have painted it another color. But it just doesn't show up quite as much. I think it would have shown up better in yellow. But still, it's, it's going to be fine. These are from Amy Tangerine for American Crafts. And they're an unusual shade of chipboard. They're an unusual color. They're kind of a tan color. Sometimes they work really well uh, by themselves, but I decided that it needed to, to be a different color. And I think here's where, again, I'm going to add a little gray ink around the edge. I use Stamping Up's Basic Gray. I don't have a gray distress ink, but it, it works basically the same way. I don't want a lot, just a little bit to help this tie into the other papers. Now when you add book paper onto something, if, it, if it's a fairly new book, I mean anything like in the last half century, you can use um, a tape runner, but as the book gets older and the paper gets more brittle, you have to be really careful about running tape runner across book paper as I've learned the hard way it may tear. So sometimes it's better to use other adhesives or put your uh, adhesive down on the background and then lay the book paper on top of that. So we're doing a little quick stamping here. I happen to have happy birthday there laying on my work table. So that's the one I used to put that on the um, call out because he was talking on the phone with his daughters. And since the white didn't show up so much, I went around it with a black marker to make it show up a little bit more. And if I'd really been unhappy, I could have just painted over the whole thing and redid the stamping and all, but I wasn't that unhappy. 
Okay, I need a little bit more title down here, so I've got some more stickers and still going through stickers and thickers. These are from Doodlebug. And it says 65 is not old. And to do the top of the eye, I decided to play with a tool I hadn't used very much. This little pickup tool came with my uh, silhouette when I bought it. And it's okay. It's not my favorite little thing. I saw Jennifer McGuire use this on a video one time, and I thought, oh, I have to have one of those. And then when it came with my silhouette, I haven't found that I've used it all that much, but it's designed to pick up little small things. So maybe I just need to give it a little more of a chance. And we're about ready to embellish. I am going to have to move the journaling up because I used up the space that it I had allowed for it down at the bottom. A few of these October afternoon stickers and I think our page will be just about wrapped up. And the journaling is going to go over the photo of my husband sitting in the chair there. We went we bought him a new chair for his birthday so that's we went chair shopping. I originally picked these stickers to use that telephone and I didn't end up using it. And these punch outs also needed a little something around the edge, so I went around those with a black marker too. The one thing I hadn't used that was on my table originally were those stars. So I sprayed them with some um, of that mint mist and they worked out better than I thought. They, they kind of look pretty there, I think, adding just a little bit of continuity. sketch we've got our two photos and our unusual background behind them some different stickers up here I just had to move the journaling up because I didn't really have enough room with the ones that I wanted to sort of move over to this space got to use some um, letter stickers which I hardly ever use and lots of numbers that I hardly ever use so I've got quite a few things in on this page okay close-up view of this. So thanks for watching today and I hope you'll check out my blog for other projects and products that I have available and if you like the video I always appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, I think that helps YouTube advance my channel. So thank you so much.